Our forum tonight is not a debate, but rather an opportunity to get to know the candidates. The candidates will each be asked a total of five questions, and for the sake of time, we'll have 90 seconds to answer each question. Four of the same questions will be asked to each candidate, with the first candidate to answer being randomly selected. The fourth candidate question will be randomly selected from the four identified student-generated questions. Four student-generated questions will be asked across all eight candidates. That means two of the candidates will answer the same question. <coughs> the timekeeper will be using a time clock and will hold up a green card when the candidate should begin, yellow card to indicate 30 seconds remaining, and a red card when the candidate is out of time. We have a student participant whose role for this evening is to randomly select questions and participants throughout the evening. I will now ask our student participant to introduce herself and choose the candidate to begin our first question. Hello, my name is Kayla Harderson and I'm a senior at West Aurora High School. Um, this is my 12th year in the district. I attended Goodwin Elementary School and Jewel Middle School. At West, I participate in soccer, cross country, speech team, student government, and band. Candidate number one, we will begin with you. What are the most important roles and responsibilities of a board member? The most important role of a, of a board member is to make sure that the temperature of the community as well as the education of our children is, is met. And we do that in a number of different ways. Uh, the first way we do that is to participate in events that occur within the district. It's a, it's a full-time job. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and tell you that. It's just show up every now and then. So you have to be willing to, to take on that responsibility of being present when called upon either by someone in the community, by the superintendent, by a teacher, by a parent, and a lot of times even by your own, your own kids. Um, attending events is so important so that people know that you, you care, um, so that the community can count on you to represent them, which is what we've been voted on to do. And we represent them by making the best decisions for the community as well as for the students. Thank you. Candidate number two, you are next to answer this question. What are the most important roles and responsibilities of a board member? Uh, one of the first uh, and most important responsibilities that a board member has uh, is to hire the uh, right uh, superintendent to lead our district. And we have done a wonderful job hiring Dr. Craig uh, to lead our district. Another important role that a board member should know is that we only have one employee and this is our superintendent, and we are not here to run the day-to-day -day activities of the school. Uh, the good board members should be able to uh, hear the others, uh, trust their opinion, and, and work hard, get enough information, and get enough data so that we, he can make the right decision for the, the district as a whole. Thank you. Candidate three, you are next to answer this question. What are the most important roles and responsibilities of a board member? Uh, I believe the most important role is to, to govern, uh, hire and govern the uh, superintendent um, who oversees the, the district. Um, in addition to that, I think we have to uh, be present within the community, um, have our ears to the ground, and like someone mentioned earlier, gauge the temperature of the community. Um, but I think that the top priority it would be to manage and govern the superintendent. Thank you. Candidate number four, you are next to answer this question. What are the most important roles and responsibilities of a board member? Uh, the most important roles, uh, there's a lot of important roles for the board members. Uh, the first thing is to make sure that they are a conduit to the community and hear exactly what is going on there. Uh, this school district serves a wide community, it's a wide area. So it's good to get your ear out there and hear from all areas. Uh, how do you do that? You go to 
events. You go to um, all levels of events, K through 12, uh, just to see and hear from the community and hear what's going on. On the other side of it, the school board is responsible for hiring a superintendent, and they need to hire a superintendent that reflects that community and goes to lead that community and lead the board because, and lead the board towards the, the end goal of uh, educating every student in the community. Thank you. Candidate number five, you are next to answer this question. What are the most important roles and responsibilities of a board member? The, the most important responsibility of the board member, I think, can really be summed up with um, advocating. You advocate for the students, you advocate for the community, and you advocate for the school district. We advocate for the students by making sure that, that every dollar coming into the school district is spent towards ed providing them with the best educational opportunities that they can have so all of our students can succeed educationally. You advocate for the community by, showing, by being open and having accountability. We do that by um, evaluating our leadership within the school district that goes from stu superintendent on down. We do that by evaluating our uh, policies within the district, monitoring our student achievement and adopting new program changes where necessary, as well as um, monitoring our finances, again, so we're advocating for the community that their money is being spent in the best way possible to educate our children in our public schools. And then lastly, you wanna advocate for the district. The West Aurora School District does a lot of things that the West Aurora community needs to be proud of and should be proud of. They are proud of them when they know about them. And that's why a board member has a great responsibility to advocate and make sure that the community knows all the great things that are going on within the school district. Thank you. Candidate number six, you are next to answer this question. What are the most important roles and responsibilities of a board member? Um, one of the most important roles of a board member is to establish the culture of the school district. Um, for me, that means student achievement, and we need to communicate that to our superintendent and our staff that that is our number one priority. Everything that we do touches it. Uh, what college this young girl wants to go to, how she performed here in school, and I want them to guide us and give us recommendations on how we meet those objectives. We need to um, interface with the General Assembly to make sure we have resources to to accomplish those goals. Um, we hire our superintendent is one of our responsibilities. We make recommendations on staff. Um, we interface with the community when that's something we should be doing daily so we can get a very good pulse of what our voting members and our taxpayers want out of their school district. So it, to sum it up, it's establishing a culture of, that reflects the community and what they want out of their school and how they want their students to perform while they're there. Thank you. Candidate number seven, you are next to answer this question. What are the most important roles and responsibilities of a board member? Well, besides hiring the superintendent, the primary focus should be the education of each and every child, a complete quality education. I believe openness within the board with the public, with the taxpayer, with the parents, and the students themselves is paramount. If there is no transparency, if there is no openness, if there is no, shall we say, oversight, um, then it, it all goes for naught. The education of the child is paramount. All other considerations have to be put aside. Um, if the superintendent comes to us with his recommendations, we should be able to question it. We should be able to question other staff members as to what the problems are, and we should all be involved in the problem solving. Any other business does it the same way. You, you have to have open communication. You can't be hiding things and, and, and sitting on information that the public and the parents need to know. Thank you. Candidate number eight, you are next to answer this question. What are the most important roles and responsibilities of a board member? I believe it's important for a board member to keep in mind that what their decisions that they're making affect 13,000 students, not just one particular student at a one particular school. It is our job to oversee the superintendent and those underneath him 
we are not there for the day to day operations that's why we have those people in place we are a collaborative team that need to work together and be transparent within each other and keep in mind that one sole member cannot do anything on their own we have to work together thank you This is our second question. Candidate number six, we will begin with you. What do you feel are the most important issues currently facing the school board and how would you suggest these be addressed? The most important issue I see is student achievement. Um, there, nothing really other than that matters when you're administrating a public school system. Um, right now, um, 40% of our students who make it to college need a re remediation when they get to, when they get there. Um, that's that's a problem. We need to address that. Why are why are the, why are we losing kids? And that's the way I see it. We're losing. If a kid goes to school and he's not ready to go to college, we've lost them. What factors are figuring in their lives that we? What challenges do we need to overcome in order to place them in a situation beyond our school? that places them in a position of success. Is that place, you know, do we need to coach them on how to get to maybe, maybe college isn't for them. Maybe they need to go to trade school. Um, do they need to know how to get into trade school, who to talk to? Um, those types of things would be paramount to me. Thank you. Candidate number seven, you are next to answer this question. What do you feel are the most important issues currently facing the school board and how would you suggest these be addressed? I believe the trust of the community is something that needs to be brought back in. Uh, I think there have been some recent issues that caused some anxiety within the community as to uh, what was going on within the school it's itself. Um, I mentioned the transparency that needs to be there, the communication. Uh, I, I think that right off the bat is, is important because we're relying on these people to give us their money, to do the things that we feel we need to do, and we need to be open and not change uh, course once we have the money. Um, I think one of the other issues that's facing the, the school district right now that they're actually starting to tackle are the issues of kids who are not academically inclined to be college students. Uh, there's a mention of trade schools, but I think the reestablishing of early trades within the school itself, which we're gonna see happening with the Wisner, I think that needs to be expounded on. Uh, those, those are two of the big issues I see right now because even as James mentioned, there's way too many kids who aren't ready for college and maybe shouldn't be there. Answer this question. Excuse me, candidate number eight, you are next to answer this question. What do you feel are the most important issues currently facing the school board, and how would you suggest these be addressed? One challenge I think we currently face is how we are perceived within our surrounding communities. West Aurora produces fantastic students. Our students go to top notch colleges. They're recruited by community affairs to lead teen advisory boards. We don't have surrounding communities that are on those teen advisory boards um, for nonprofit organizations. Um, we have people moving out of Aurora, North Aurora, to go to surrounding communities because they feel they can get a better education in those communities when in reality, our students at West have more opportunities, not only classroom-wise, but activity, social clubs, sporting events, than what those other schools can offer. And we need to continue to push on what is available within our district. Those other communities cannot compete with the new Weisner Center that's opening or our new West Aurora Learning Center that has opened. 
We have fantastic programs and need to continue to publish what we are doing in West and the type of students that we are producing in our community. Thank you. Candidate number one, you are next to answer this question. What do you feel are the most important issues currently facing the school board and how would you suggest these be addressed? The most important issues addressing our school are safety, opportunities, and learning. Our, our district is, is very diverse, and as has been mentioned, we sometimes get a black eye, even though we produce a high quality opportunity, high quality education, and, and we keep our kids safe. I've had two kids that have gone through our district from kindergarten uh, all the way through, through high school. Um, both have been very successful because of the safety that the school district has offered, and they both had excellent opportunities, both in the classes that they're gonna take or have taken, as well as opportunities to either continue to college or not continue to college. We are trying to get into a situation where we know not every student is gonna go to college. So there have to be other tracks that are available for them. But the main part of that is being able to learn. If we get kids that can learn how to be successful, how to uh, handle adversity, as well as how to stand up for themselves, then we've done a good job. And that's what we need to do as a district. Thank you. Candidate number two, you are next to answer this question. What do you feel are the most important issues currently facing the school board, and how would you suggest these be addressed? At this time, our world is moving at a very fast pace. Uh, one of the issues that we have is that we are preparing students for jobs that don't exist nowadays. We need to be able to prepare them. We need to prepare those that want to go to college, and we have at West Iowa High School, we have plenty of opportunities. Right now, this year, we have more kids taking AP courses and honor, and honor roll courses than any, any other year in the, in the district. And they'll be well set to go to college. Those that don't want to go to college, who want to have a trade, we're open. In this August, we're going to have the Weissner Career Center open for them, where they're going to be able to do welding. Uh, they are going to do uh, advanced machining. And we also have, in, in uh, used to be the old dryer building, they had the CNA program if they want to go into nursing. But we are, we are in charge of making sure that we can teach all our children, those who want to go to college, and, those, and provide enough opportunities for them, and those that don't, and when they come out of the house, high school, they're well granted uh, so they can advance after high school. Thank you. Candidate number three, you are next to answer this question. What do you feel are the most important issues currently facing the school board, and how would you suggest these be addressed? I believe that most important uh, issues faced in the district are retention and graduation rates. Um, both are uh, currently uh, below the state average. Uh, we need to raise those. As far as retention goes, uh, it's been mentioned earlier about the, the, the programs that we're working on as far as trades and things of that nature. Uh, those are programs that I'm excited about because those reach kids who may not actually uh, want to go to college for various reasons. Um, so essentially, what we what we have to do as as a as a district is we have to, because it's such a diverse area, we have to actually do something that's good for all people. Education is great, uh, the foundation is good here. Um, you can build upon, you know, whether you go into your workforce, whether you go into the military, whether you go into uh, the trades, whatever the case may be. But we have to focus on those types of deals for everyone. That said, I think the, the center that's gonna be opening up the pathway to prosperity is, is a great option because it opens up things for all students. Thank you. Candidate number four, you are next to answer this question. What do you feel are the most important issues currently facing the school board and how would you suggest these be addressed? Some of the most important issues facing the school board is student achievement right now. I have a daughter that just took her second day of IAR today, and I know the teacher's working very hard to prep the students. She's excited for breakfast, all that good stuff. But we need to make sure that we go above and beyond and train the staff, train the teachers, help them, help the students to continue to improve their you know, math and reading, get that student achievement. On the other hand, student achievement isn't just a test you take three times a year. Not only should we be preparing our students for post-high school education, 
um, whether it's through AP Honors classes and getting ready for that college level or any wonderful amount of careers they could go through the Career Center. But also we need to work with our elementary and middle schools to transition them from elementary to middle school and middle school to high school because those also could be very rough transitions. Um, also, we want, I feel like we need to continue to build bonds within the community. There are so many good industry companies here that we could get um, work interns into with, this, with the uh, high school. I know we do that already, but keep, take advantage of what's in our backyard. I think that would be a great way to give students a, a path to our career. Thank you. Candidate number five, you are next to answer this question. What do you feel are the most important issues currently facing the school board and how would you suggest these be addressed? So one of the most, one of the largest issues that faces our district uh, also kind of stems off of one of the strengths of our district. We have a very diverse district. Um, we need to be able to serve all of those students to help them achieve the best in their educations, whether to be to go to uh, four-year college and beyond or whether to be to go into, um, into the workforce immediately after school. Uh, by doing that, we need to make sure that our students are engaged. The, the, the school district has been doing, has, has, Westford has a lot of things to be proud of. One of the things is how the uh, dual credit courses and AP courses have exploded since the time that I was in West Aurora. That is something to be proud of. That is something that's engaging our students. That's how we're gonna continue to see achievements with our students. The Wisner Center, the, C, uh, the CNA programs, the ROTC programs, those are programs that are engaging students that maybe otherwise in past years and decades weren't as engaged in education. These are things that need to be expanded and continue to grow, and that's how we're gonna improve upon our achievement, which is something that's obviously very important, and our, just the overall education that we're providing to all of our students. Thank you. This is our third question. Candidate number eight, we will begin with you. In what ways have you been involved in helping to advance the initiatives of the school district or what steps have you taken that would help prepare you to be a knowledgeable and effective board member? I have been in this district for 12 years. With my youngest being in kindergarten, I will be here for another 12 more. I am very vested in our district. Um, my role as PTO president and treasurer have prepared me for this position beyond belief. I was able to make strides within technology, within the education, or within the technology of the elementary school. And at that time, we were the only elementary school that had that type of technology. We were also able to enhance our playground. So within that, those two areas, I was able to learn the inner workings of our school district, as well as relate to the community, which has prepared me for my role in the first year as a board member. And as my current year is um, undergoing, I've uh, embraced the learning that I've had. I ask questions, I listen, I attend events, and I talk to the key people who actually know what's going on instead of hear listening to the hearsay and attending to the latest gossip. Thank you. Candidate number one, you are next to answer this question. In what ways have you been involved in helping to advance the initiatives of the school district or what steps have you taken that would help prepare you to be a knowledgeable and effective board member? I've been involved in the district for 29 years in some way or another. And the best thing that I can do to, or that I've done to help prepare me and be successful is being a teacher. Being a parent's also been helpful, which gets up and down. So being a teacher has prepared me to know what our staff is going through, what our students are going through, as well as what the community is going through. Those things have helped me make the right decisions for our community and for the students. It gives me an opportunity to think before I just take a knee-jerk reaction to what 
so-and-so has said or what someone may think may be the case. Sit back, listen, and then apply what is your best opportunity to make the correct decision. We do that in hiring a superintendent. We do that in, in taking care of our referendum. We've done it being on part of the tech committee, rights and responsibilities. It goes all throughout everything that we dive into as a school board. Thank you. Candidate number two, you are next to answer this question. In what ways have you been involved in helping to advance the initiatives of the school district, or what steps have you taken that would help prepare you to be a knowledgeable and effective board member? I have been involved in, with the district for the past 25 years since we moved out here in, uh, in 1988 and my daughter started in, in first grade. Uh, and all my kids went through uh, elementary school, uh, middle school, and, 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 and graduated from West Aurora High School. And I always volunteered uh, to coach and help out. I also, as a board member, uh, I started one of the initiatives to uh, start a success academy. And I know that Mr. Serger is sitting here in the, uh, in the audience with me. We took a road trip to Iowa so that we can see how other uh, uh, districts uh, handle the success academy and how we can recreate that here so some students who are lagging and credit can recu recuperate their credit. I also attend um, all, of the, uh, all of our board meetings, uh, any classes that I can take, uh, I can take. I was just designated a massive board member. Um, so I am very involved in, in taking any courses that will make me a better person and a better board member. I also try to ask as many questions as I can on uh, one subject is being brought up to the board. And when that subject is said, and some people say, you make it look easy when you, uh, when you vote, but we have at least six weeks to preparate just to vote on one subject. So I try to get as much data and information that I can uh, from those who are knowledgeable. You are next to answer this question. Excuse me, candidate number three, you are next to answer this question. In what ways have you been involved in helping to advance the initiatives of the school district or what steps have you taken that would help prepare you to be a knowledgeable and effective board member? Uh, I've been active within the community in Aurora for about, uh, about 16 years um, in various roles. And that's, you know, I think one of the things that probably got me there was the mentorship programs that I I've done over the past uh, decade or so, uh, and, and other programs that I've done uh, throughout the community where, you know, it, looking at different demographics I've been exposed to, I've had the pleasure of, of, of working with folks from, from every uh, spectrum uh, within this community. And so I think I really have my ear to the ground uh, I've been able to observe things, and, and that's actually one of the reasons why I decided to run, um, because I, I feel like I have a, my finger on the pulse of this community. I understand that um, the school district is an intricate part of, of economics, um, and I know that you know with having a good school district, it can it can drive a city um, to space. Um, the better the school district, the more people are going to want to come in. Uh, the more businesses are going to want to come in and, and so on and so forth. But long or short, I've been active in this community for over a decade and a half, and I, I think uh, that has prepared me for this, to be on this board. Thank you. Candidate number four, you are next to answer this question. In what ways have you been involved in helping to advance the initiatives of the school district, or what steps have you taken that would help prepare you to be a knowledgeable and effective board member? steps that I've taken to prepare for to be a board member is my experience in education. I am currently, I am on my 13th year as a high school bio and AP environmental science teacher at Batavia High School. Uh, while there, I've been a member of the school leadership team. Um, um, I've been a member of our district's curriculum team, so we've worked on a lot of standards, rolling out education initiatives. Uh, just the other day, we went on a whole field trip of the district to see how science classes were being portrayed at different levels. Um, I'm also a union representative for our union. Uh, I have, I'm currently uh, in the process of negotiating our second education contract uh, for the teachers. So I have negotiated contracts with the board, albeit on the other side. Um, so I have experience there. And then also, uh, I, I've been in North Aurora for about six years now. And I have a son in kindergarten. I have a daughter in third grade. I'm fully invested. We love going to events all the time. We love having our face around here. It's just totally connected to the district. Thank you. Candidate number five, 
you're next to answer this question. In what ways have you been involved in helping to advance the initiatives of the school district, or what steps have you taken that would help prepare you to be a knowledgeable and effective board member? So some of the steps that I've taken to prepare myself to be um, a productive board member and to work with, with the board as a group is um, I attend board meetings. Um, I've attended uh, board meetings. I've also attended board workshops so that I can learn more about the district and uh, what I, and how the district runs. And I've also attended regional, um, so the regional association of school board put on, uh, had a meeting and also I had a training that I've, uh, that I've attended. Um, so those are things I've done to specifically get my feet, my feet on the ground so I can start right away on the board. But as it relates to the district as a whole and the community, soon after I graduated from West Aurora and graduated from law school, I came back to our community and I began working for the Kane County State's Attorney's Office as a prosecuting criminal, uh, criminal prosecuting attorney. Um, there I served our community, the most vulnerable of our community, the victims of our community, that of crime in our community, as well as I've been a, um, a board member on the mem board of directors for the Marie Wilkinson Food Pantry, where I've served, served our most vulnerable members of our community, and that has taught me valuable lessons about, about serving. Um, and then my experience as a uh, litigating attorney and a transactional attorney and solving problems for clients, I believe I can bring those to the board to solve the many complicated issues that uh, the board faces. Thank you. Candidate number six, you are next to answer this question. In what ways have you been involved in helping to advance the initiatives of the school district or what steps have you taken that would help prepare you to be a knowledgeable and effective board member? In a word, volunteer. Uh, basically, uh, community isn't a place where I, I live, it's what I am. Um, I was one of the principal organizers of the Neighborville Professional Firefighters. I was the CFO of that organization for 10 plus years. Um, during that time period, I negotiated contracts under the threat of layoff and during a recession, and we did not lose people, and we were able to find what really made my name is when I was able to find a problem within the city budget structure that was causing them a bottleneck. Um, I'm also was one of the principal organizers of the, of the firefighters charity. Our target was children with disabilities, specifically uh, muscular dystrophy and autism. Every year we write che checks that are in five figures for, for these individuals. It's grown to be the largest charity in the city of Naperville. Um, I was also the CFO of the Illinois Firefighter uh, Peer Support Team. That, that organization was created when we were starting to lose more individuals to suicide than we were to cancers or trauma or whatever. And we um, went ahead and just created an organization that we could help them. Um, just today, I was at West Aurora High School doing 12 leads on EKGs to make sure we find kids who have cardiac abnormalities, because it's a skill I have as a paramedic. Why wouldn't I give it to my community? If it's right down the street from me, I don't have an excuse not to be there. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And candidate number seven, you're next to answer this question. In what ways have you been involved in helping to advance the initiatives of the school district, or what steps have you taken that would help prepare you to be a knowledgeable and effective board member? Well, I've been a taxpayer for the city of Aurora for 30 years, homeowner. Raised four kids. Uh, my youngest just graduated from West High this past May. Um, got lots of teachers uh, in our neighborhood talking with them over the years when I would have questions as to what was going on with the school, possibly even a particular teacher or an event. Um, I couldn't get too involved um, previously just due to the fact that there were too many times when I would not be available. Uh, but my job changed. I now have lots of time. And I've been starting to do the same thing with workshops. I've been spending a lot of time on the computer, going through, researching what makes a good school board member, what makes a school board work efficiently, what makes a school board quality. And that's something that uh, I did a lot of in my career was the quality process. And that gets into problem solving, brainstorming, and identifying things that you can change and those that you can't, and accepting those and, and moving on. Thank you. 
We will now move into the student-generated portion of questioning. Our student participants will randomly select a question and randomly select a candidate to answer the question. Student A, you will now ask your question to candidate number seven. Um, I'm Arturo Salcedo. I've been in the district for 12 years, starting with um, Hill Elementary School through Jewel Middle School and now into uh, West River High School. I've been involved with Scholastic Bowl, Mathletes, Marching Band, Pep Band, Cross Country, Track, Tennis, and various other activities at West Aurora. Now, my question is, um, given that the reality that our schools serve students with different languages, socioeconomic and cultural differences, what training programs for staff are necessary to create a greater understanding for students' perspectives? I'm sorry, I didn't get your first name. Uh, I'm Arturo Salcedo. Okay, nice to meet you. West Aurora School District is, is very diverse and we do have everything from very well-off areas to very poor areas. Uh, we do run into a lot of the issues with language and so forth. One of the ideas I would have is to reach out and partner with other organizations that if you have a situation where there's a strong language problem, that we have somebody possibly come in and sit with the person during classes so they can uh, basically help the teacher teach that student. I know it can be a little difficult because there's, there's only so much you can spend to get somebody to come in. So that's where partnering with other organizations, other schools, uh, possibly even other um, things like the, the library and the city council <coughs> to find resources that are good for the students. For the staff and teachers, it's, it's all out there. Each situation is different. You can't say there's one particular program that a teacher can take that's going to fix or help adapt to a situation that other teachers are going to have. Thank you. Student B, you will now ask your question to candidate number eight. Hi, my name is Ezekiel Navarro. I've been a part of the school district for the past 12 years. I went to Freeman Elementary School and Washington Middle School, and now I'm a senior in West Aurora High School. I've been involved in the band program, the jazz band, marching band, and almost all the different band levels, and a few sports. My question for you today is, in what ways can we celebrate student successes beyond what is reported from standardized test measures? Thank you, Ezekiel. The way we celebrate student success is a very gray area, and I say that because there's some people who celebrate student success based on their class rank, their grade point average, and in reality, there's other students who are just not at that level, and that's okay too. We need to realize that rewarding students for specific grades is not teaching the entire student. Um, and we have to celebrate each student's individual success. And um, we need to acknowledge that each student is unique. Um, and by celebrating their success, we're giving them motivation and value and self-worth. Um, we have to find what motivates those students, whether it's a note on their, um, their uh, paper that says, I noticed you spent an extra 10 minutes studying for spelling today, or I noticed you were in the library, or I noticed this. Um, it takes teachers and staff getting to know their students and what works for each individual student to getting them to succeed. And we also have to realize that not every student needs a tangible thing. It's a 
pat on the back. It's a note. Sometimes it's a sticker. Sometimes Thank it's you. a smiley Your face. Your time is up. Student D. You will now ask your question to candidate number four. Hello, I'm Evelia Solgis. I have been in the district for 12 years. I attended Freeman Elementary School and Jewel Middle School, and I am now a senior at West High. I participate in the speech team and the drama club. My question for you today is knowing the challenges of our diverse community, including socioeconomic, mental health, ethnic, and food differences, and still being tasked with educating the whole child, how would you best use our resources to attend to this diverse reality? Thank you, Emily. Um, this is a challenge. Uh, educating the whole, cha whole child becomes a um, issue here. So what I see, the first thing that we need to do is establish community. When there is a community that includes the you know, parents, kids, and all staff in a school, and they, they see that they function together positively, a student then can see that they're cared about and they have a safe place to go to no matter what. Um, the district recently has made a commitment to uh, social, social emotional learning for all children, K through 12. And I think this is a great step in addressing educating the whole child. Of course, gains in reading and math skills are important but also having students be, feel safe at school. Having someone, everyone has someone they could trust at school. Knowing that they're safe, they're not gonna get bullied. Knowing that they're not hungry so that we get them some food, that is part of the whole child initiative. Because if they are not meeting their basic needs, the student will not be ready to learn. And this shouldn't be something that's put just on the district. It should, we should try to get the entire community together to bring these resources to the schools that need it the most to make sure that the student's basic needs are met. Thank you. Student A, you will now ask your question to candidate number one. Hello, my name is Kayla Harderson. My question is for candidate number one. Given the reality that our schools serve students with different languages, as well as socioeconomic and cultural differences, what training and or programs for staff are necessary to create a greater understanding of students' perspectives? The best training is gonna come from the classroom. I think having teachers who understand that we do have students from all different areas and all different backgrounds and being able to, at some point, look at those individual backgrounds and say, here's what this student needs. That's part of what you learn when you take on the, the task and the, the function of being an educator. You also know that students learn from, from different perspectives. Some are gonna take all their notes and learn from their notes. Some are not gonna have to open a book every night, but they'll still be able to retain and learn. The, the main thing that, that we as educators and the school board is an educating process is that every student has the potential no matter how hard that student is or isn't working, they have the potential. I'm, I'm gonna tell a quick story, I hope it's a quick story. Uh, a student can go to, to go to college and take calculus and think, oh, I can't, I can't do calculus. But if they get the right motivation, the right push from an educator, they will continue to be successful. And at some point, they'll look back and say, oh, thank you for giving me that opportunity. Thank you. Student B. You will now ask your question to candidate number six. Hello, I'm Arturo Saucedo. In what ways can we celebrate student success beyond what is reported from standardized test measures? I'm sorry, did I start early? <laughs> One of the ways we can celebrate is by giving this young man a recommendation, a board of education recommendation. He was brave enough to get in front of a room full of adults read a question that's rather hard. Um, but as far as tests go, I think it's one of the things we need to do as state is get off tests. I actually think they're kind of pointless. I'll be down in Springfield next week, and I'm gonna advocate that to a lot of our legislators. It's one of the few things the IEA, the IFT, and the DSCs all agree on, that they do not address the child. Um, 
One of the things across the river that um, 131 does extremely well is tr trying to change their perception. And I, I would like to mimic what they're doing over there. I think that what they're doing is perception is reality. They are doing a very hard hitting messaging campaign and it's, and it's producing dividends for them. It, it, when it's on YouTube, when it's on Facebook and Instagram and so on and so forth, it looks beautiful and it paints 131 in a very positive light. I was impressed by what they were doing. Thank you. Thank you. Student C, you will now ask your question to candidate number two. Hello, um, I'm Nicole Oswald. I'm a senior at West Rowe High School. I've been in the district for 12 years, starting at Fern and moving on to Jewel Middle School. Um, I participate at, in marching band, pep band, creative writing, NHS, and PE leaders at West Rowe High School. And my question for you tonight is, how can we improve our current initiative to build our career pathways, offerings um, balanced with support for post-secondary opportunities? I think that West Aurora and this district is doing a great job of um, supporting our students for uh, secondary opportunities. As I said before, we have a new early childhood center, which we're gonna start serving students from zero to three. Uh, and we're going to have to make home visits so that those students will be ready for kindergarten. Uh, we also have a nursing program and our CNA program um, at, the, at the new building. We have a transition program, and we also are going to have the Weissner uh, Career Center uh, for welding and, and machining uh, and all that. So kids that don't want to go to college, they have the opportunity to have a trade and be and so they can be helped uh, in their second in their um, secondary opportunity opportunities they don't want to go to college. So we are trying to work with all our students, uh, all 30, almost 13,000 students. We want to make sure that they are successful in whichever career they choose. And we offer, not only do we help them in their careers, but we also have plenty of opportunities so they can be involved uh, in many sports and many activities and many clubs. Thank you. Student C, you will now ask your question to candidate number three. Hello. My name is Leslie Meza, and I've been in the school district for 12 years. I attended Greenman Elementary and Jefferson Middle School, and I am now a senior at West Aurora High School. At West, I participate in the French Club, um, creative writing, speech. I'm a PE leader for the adaptive PE class, and I'm a cadet in the AFGRTC unit at West. My question for you is, how can we improve our current initiative to build our career pathway offerings balance with support for post-secondary opportunities? Well, I think that uh, we, have, we have to actually look at our district. Uh, we have to have things and pr programs that are diverse as our community are, uh, is. Um, that said, I think the career building um, and the, the Wiser Center, as was mentioned earlier, offers initiatives for a variety of folks, uh, uh, whereas you know our kids can go into you know the trades um, immediately following high school and into into programs such as that. Um, again, we still offer a great uh, education in the district, but I think we have to offer initiatives that are, that is um, as diverse as our community is, um, and so I think that that program as well as others, we have to think outside of the box. Our, um, our community is one that is, is going to uh, take a different look at things. We're gonna have to take some innovation, innovative looks into things and from that we'll be able to make decisions on you know, what is best for the entire community, not just a subset or a certain group. Thank you. Student D. You will now ask your question to candidate number five. Hello, I'm Stephanie Padilla. I've been in the district for eight years. Uh, I first attended Hill Elementary and then I went to Hergit. Uh, the activities I participate in are marching band, pep band, I run creative writing club, um, I'm an early bird jazz, and I'm in both a Spanish NHS and regular NHS, and I'm one of the editors for Muses. So my question is, Knowing the challenges of our diverse communities, such as socioeconomic and mental health, ethnicity, and food differences, and still being tasked with educating the whole child, 
how would you best use our resources to attend this reality? Thank you for the question. Um, for, so focusing on educating our students doesn't just end, begin and end with tests. Um, in, our, in our society as we are today, there's so many stressors on kids that we didn't have sitting up here as board mem or potential board members that we, didn't, we never had to face. And the social emotional um, uh, learning that the initiatives that the school district has taken on are important and they need to, be, need to continue for our students. Um, it is important that we know that in our community, when a child comes to school hungry, that child's not gonna be able to learn. When a child comes to school and their homework isn't done, that's not necessarily because that child doesn't want to learn. It could be because that child doesn't have the driving force at home. What our school district can do and has done and needs to continue to do is to reach out to the community, reach out to the parents, do parent education as the school district is doing in the, in the parent academies, um, to show that, edu that education isn't something that's contained within the four walls of the building, but it's something that we want to instill in our students to be, to be something that they strive for, that they're thirsty for education, and by teaching their parents to instill that in, in the children, I think that's how we're gonna um, hope to see our children succeed even more. Thank you. This is our fifth and final question. Candidate number seven, we will begin with you. What makes you the best candidate to fill one of the board openings as a representative of the broader 129 community? Well, I would never say I'm the best candidate. I, I think I bring qualities that the board could really use. Um, a lot of it comes from my experience in the private sector, uh, in the jobs that I had uh, for major corporations. Mentoring, uh, finding strengths and weaknesses and matching them, um, the brainstorming, the, the problem solving, uh, and, and the general ability to be a little vocal. I think some folks within the, the school board already know that I can be vocal and I'm not afraid to, to open my mouth and say something if I don't think it's or if it's something that I feel needs to be said. Um, I, I tend to be very open with uh, the people that I deal with, uh, and I'd like to see more of that within the school board, with the community, with parents, taxpayers, and the kids themselves. That's, that's what I think I can bring. Thank you. Candidate number eight. You are next to answer this question. What makes you the best candidate to fill one of the board openings as a representative of the broader 129 community? Something very unique about me is within my four children, I have two on the AP honors track. I understand those students' needs. I have a student with special needs and has a certain accommodations. I understand those students. I have a student on a traditional track. I understand their needs as well. I understand the teacher's side of it, working with those my teacher or my student or my children and their teachers. I understand the parent side of it, as I led the parent teacher organization for eight years. I understand the community side of it as a taxpayer, as a living member of this community. I understand the business side of it. I work in the government sector. I understand contracts. I understand taxpayer dollars. I understand government funding. But more importantly, I'm a level-headed person. I'm open-minded, and I collaborate as a team effort. We are here to oversee nearly 13,000 students and have their best interest in mind, and we need to keep that. Thank you. Candidate number one, you are next to answer this question. What makes you the best candidate to fill one of the board openings as a representative of the broader 129 community? 
We serve a number of different students, families, and communities with, within the city of Aurora and even within our school district. And you have to be able to listen and understand and put yourself in someone else's shoes in more than one, more than one time. The students learn in a number of different ways. Not every student is going to be able to take two plus two and get four the very first time they look at it. It might take giving them four manipulatives and say, okay, what do you have here? Count those out. You have two in this hand, two in this hand. Do you get the concept? We do the same thing as board members. I'm the best candidate because I understand that, that concept and that practice, whether it be hiring a superintendent, working with teachers, listening to community members, dealing with parents, and, and even attending events. You need to attend events and understand that people want to see you there. I attended an event two weeks ago, and I, I like to sit in the back. But someone said, no, you, you got to go up front so that people know that you're there supporting them. I am still trying to understand that concept, but that's why I'm the best candidate. Thank you. Candidate number two, you are next to answer this question. What makes you the best candidate to fill one of the board openings as a representative of the broader 129 community? Um, I understand that I am only one vote on the, on the board, and I understand that my role on, on the board is not to run the day-to-day -day, uh, activities of our district, but our role is to hire a superintendent and give him the leeway so that he can run a, a district without collaborating with us. I also, through all my extensive training, uh, and know that I need to trust those around me, ask for a lot of data, ask for a lot of information, ask the tough questions so that I can make the best decision that I can for all, for all the students in my district. Um, I have also, mm. for all the students in my district, and I understand that I need to listen to others. And even if they don't agree, uh, I don't agree with their, their position, I need to support them because we, we are a governing board and we are ruled by the majority of the vote. Uh, but we need to ask a lot of questions and we need to ask a lot of tough questions to do the best that we can for our students. Thank you. Candidate number four, you're next to answer this question. What makes you the best candidate to fill one of the board openings as a representative of the broader 129 community. That's four or three. I apologize, that's my mistake. Let me repeat that. Candidate number three. Okay. okay. Candidate I'm number so three, you're next to answer this question. My apologies to the audience as well. What makes you the best candidate to fill one of the board openings as a representative of the broader 129 community? Well, I think my, it's my passion for the community. I wanna see this community thrive. Um, you know, I live here, um, I'm invested. I've been working in this community for 16 plus years. Uh, so I'm very passionate about this community. Um, I, I, I understand that, again, that education is, is the key to economics 101. Uh, you, you bring in a good district, uh, it impacts the, the district. Um, what makes me one of, the, one of the better candidates? I think it's my background. You know, I have a project management background. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a businessman. Um, I'm a natural collaborator. Um, and again, I, I fall back on, on, on the fact that I've been active within this community on, on a number of boards, committees, panels from the, you know, the private to the city to the county level. Um, but overall, I think it's my passion to see this community do well. Thank you. Candidate number four, you are next to answer this question. What makes you the best candidate to fill one of the board openings as a representative of the broader 129 community? Um, first and foremost, I would say it's my experience in education. I'm 37 years old. I've been in some sort of school since kindergarten. I've never left. So I think that <laughs> helps me out a lot because I have, uh, I know the new stuff coming in. I have an ear to it. I like, and I just enjoy talking to people that work, you know, work in education, it's my passion. Um, I also, I've taught, I said AP and honors, you know, track, I've also have currently teaching a co-taught biology class for lower levels. So I have seen and work with all sorts of students and know ways to assist them and help them and help them achieve. Um, also my, ex but I don't, I, I know I don't know everything, so I'm also willing to ask questions. 
I love asking questions. <laughs> the board workshops that the district put on were awesome. I probably asked too many questions, but I loved learning. I wanted to know everything that I could. Also, my experience with no negotiations, uh, negotiating contracts with the current school district that I work in. I've had spent, spent plenty of time with that school board, working with them, problem solving. Even though we often didn't see eye to eye, we often eventually came to a solution that both sides could agree to. And I think I could bring that to this board as well. Finally, I've been in the North Aurora community for the past six years. I've lived a lot of other places, but I've never felt a connection to community like I have had in the past six years. Thank you. Candidate number five, you're next to answer this question. What makes you the best candidate to fill one of the board openings as a representative of the broader 129 community? Thank you, thank you. So one of the things about my background that I think helps me um, help prepare me to be a board member is now being a practicing attorney for the last 10 years and now focusing on civil, civil litigation and civil transactional law. What I do every day is I have clients that come to me with problems. They, they are experts in, in their field and they have, come, they have hit an impasse where they cannot solve or come to a solution in their problem. So I have to listen and I have to learn because I'm not an expert in their field. So I have to listen and learn to be able to understand what their issues are, to be able to bring all sides together, and to be able to work towards a common goal, which is to resolve the problem. So that's how my, that's how my work experience will lead me to be a good board member and to work with the other members on the board. But then also I believe my history with the district will make me a good board member. As a product of Freeman Elementary School, Washington Middle School, and West Aurora, I have, as well as my parents being products of Freeman Elementary School, Washington Middle School, and West War, and my grandparents being products of Freeman Elementary School, Washington Middle School, and West War High School. I am proud of our district. My passion and my pride for our district led me to come back to the district, raise my family, and have my son as a fourth generation member of the Freeman Elementary School. So I will bring passion, pride, and experience Thank you. bringing Your people together. Candidate number six, you're next to answer this question. What makes you the best candidate to fill one of the board openings as a representative of the broader 129 community? Thanks, Mike. Uh, it's, it's my experience in, in three different fields. Uh, the first one is, is, this is a political animal. The school district is a political animal. I have a lot of experience in politics. Um, a lot of the people downstate are gonna be making decisions about our school district, about what happens to us. Well, I know those players. I know what their strengths are and I know where they're vulnerable. Um, I will press that on behalf of the students who are sitting right in front of us. Um, the second thing is that a school district is also a contractual animal. We have a contract coming up. That's something I have experience in negotiating under ten cent situations and good situations. I'm looking forward to this one. I think we're going to do a really good job this time. And then the final reason is um, my um, work in the community, um, my charitable organizations, my nonprofit. But more, most importantly, what really makes me qualified is my professional career. When we talk a lot about the whole child during the course of this debate or formal or whatever you want to call it. Um, you can talk about it, you can learn about it, you can do all these things about it, but once you see it, the nature of your resolve changes. It changes your fight. Thank you. This now concludes our candidate forum. Thank you to the audience for attending. Thank you to Mrs. Kelly Wren and the student group for their questions and participation. Thank you to the Herget Middle School staff for hosting, and thank you candidates for your willingness to participate. Voting for the consolidated election will be held on Tuesday, April 2nd. Ladies and gentlemen, have a good evening.